Are you coughing more than usual? Is the air feeling heavy? In this podcast, we're going to talk about how the ongoing wildfires compromise air quality, and we'll discuss the steps you may want to consider to protect your lungs. You're not going to want to miss this episode as we dive into functional medicine tips for supporting lung health during these crazy wildfires. Welcome to the Hashimoto's Doctor Podcast. You're now part of a growing community of people determined to take their health back through education and self-empowerment. But because of the healthcare system today, we don't have access to the types of healthcare that we want. So we have to do things differently. We've got to do things smarter, and we do that by becoming our own advocates. This podcast will give you the perspective and thoughts of one of the world's leading Hashimoto's doctors. So let's get started. Hey, everybody. It's good to be back with another episode of the Hashimoto's Doctor podcast. I'm your host, Brad Shook, and today we're going to address a burning issue. And I mean quite literally a burning issue. And this is the impact of the wildfire smoke on our lungs. I'm going to share with you some tips on what you may want to consider doing. And this is, uh, I think this is a major issue for a lot of people uh, in Canada and in the United States. But if you are you know, in an area where there's higher, uh, there's, there's higher smog or there's air pollution, this is also relevant to you. Now, if you don't know this, uh, it's hard to avoid it if you look at the news, but there are wildfires just raging across Canada and it's affecting the air quality across the continent. And it's really important for you to understand and know that the smoke is potentially dangerous and can create a lot of problems for your health and your lungs. If you're autoimmune uh, or if you're already prone to uh, asthma or have another lung condition, uh, this is is even uh, more important. And and hopefully you've been advised, uh, if you already have some pre-existing lung issues, uh, that Uh, you, you know, with some steps and things that you can do, but if not, I'm going to share with you some tips and things that you can consider and that you can run by your doctor to see if it's right for you. We're going to talk about how to minimize the smoke exposure. And I'm going to talk about some things that you probably haven't heard, which are the dietary lifestyle and nutritional supplement strategies that can make a difference. So let's go ahead and dive in. At this very moment, There are over 500 active wildfires that are raging across Canada. The eastern province of Quebec and the western province of British Columbia are the hardest hit. And it's estimated that over 250 of these fires are considered out of control. This year has really been exceptionally dry and it's made this environment for these fires uh, much more, uh, much more favorable for uh, for spreading of the fires and for uh, the difficulty of of control and containment. So far, it is really one of the most destructive wildfire seasons that that has been seen in decades, with over 20 million acres burned. So it's just massive wildfires going on all across Canada, and there's some in the in the U.S. Um, out west as well. And the the thing here is. You might be asking, you know, how does this really affect me? But it's it's the smoke, and it's the fact that the smoke is not staying put. It's drifting south and contaminating the air in the United States. And this is from really Montana and Colorado all the way to New York, down to Philadelphia. And more than a third of Americans are living in areas that have issued air quality warnings due to smoke from these fires. And, I mean, I live in... North Carolina, in Western North Carolina. And this has been a problem for us. Now, not nearly as bad as some of the images that you'll find uh, if you look it up online for uh, New York and some of the other cities that are that are further north, but we've definitely seen it here. And I know just the other day that the color of the sky was almost this like reddish orange color and the air was really thick and uh, the air quality wasn't good and that's something that you should absolutely be doing and that's checking your local air quality to see if you're being affected by this Uh, because if you are there's some things that you definitely want to consider doing now the, the 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 smoke itself is you know it it's contained and and it has a number of different contaminants 
which can make breathing more difficult, and also it can exas it can uh, exacerbate respiratory conditions. So if you already have asthma or another respiratory condition, it's really important. Hopefully you've been given some ad some advice and guidance, but it's very important that you limit your exposure to this wildfire smoke. And there are some things that I'm going to share with you that may also be helpful in dealing with it if you're if you've been exposed or you know if you have to go out and um, you don't you, that you can't you know completely avoid it there are some things that you can do there as well the main problem with the smoke though is the particulate and the particulate if you just imagine like tiny particles that are so small that they can penetrate deep into your lungs and even enter your bloodstream this particulate matter and the fact that it's so abundant in the wildfire smoke is really one of the major issues here. So the next thing that we really need to discuss is how does the wildfire smoke actually affect our lungs? And when most people get exposed to the particulate in the wildfire smoke, their lungs start to produce mucus. And the mucus, the job of the mucus is to trap these particles and get them out of the lungs. And what happens here is that sometimes when you're exposed to this particulate, everyone has a different immune response to it. And some people, they will have a more compromised lung lining or lung barrier system. And when this happens, the particulate can more easily pass into the bloodstream. And then once it's in the bloodstream, the immune response is uh, initiated. And again, we all have our unique bio-individualized response, immune response to the particulate. So one person's response is going to be different from another person's. And some people can have very strong inflammatory responses. Some people have, you know, it can trigger asthma attacks and uh, exacerbation of other conditions. But one of the things that will happen is more frequently is that you will have you will see that someone or some people will produce excess mucus, which can be problematic. And it's, it's, really, it's really important to kind of think about the lungs conceptually that they are a permeable or what we would call selectively permeable interface between the outside world and the inside world of your body and your bloodstream. And the you know, in your blood, in, in your blood is where you have circulating immune cells, and they're constantly monitoring inter, anything that is entering the bloodstream through the lung barrier. Now, the cells that make up the lung barrier, they're epithelial cells. These cells also uh, have uh, defense mechanisms, and they make different types of compounds to help neutralize and prevent the passage of these particulate into. Uh, the bloodstream, but if the lung barrier again is compromised, then this can uh, occur more easily. So if you think of the lungs as like a, a room and the walls are made up of special cells, just think that the wall in the room is a wall of specialized cells. When this, the, the, the particles, the particulate from the wildfire smoke enters the room, the cells that line these walls become irritated and what they do is they produce a sticky goo to try and bind this particulate matter and the sticky goo is the mucus and this sometimes will again you'll you have uh, a, uh, a response that is a more severe response and you will produce too much mucus making it hard to breathe now the immune system activation causes the production of what are called chemical messengers, immune chemical messengers called cytokines. You can think of these cytokines, which are made by the immune cells, as tiny soldiers. And these little soldiers made by immune cells, when they get exposed to the particulate matter from the smoke, what they do is they tell the body their signal they signal the inflammatory response and they tell the body to make more sticky mucus and they drive this inflammatory response in an attempt to prevent more of this particulate from entering the bloodstream. Now too much inflammation, if you have an overactive inflammatory response, can cause problems with breathing and lung health. Okay, so what we need to do now is figure out how can we protect our lungs. 
And it's really, the first step is pretty simple, and that is to reduce your exposure to the smoke as much as possible. And that would include not going outside when the air quality is not good, and not exercising outside if there's not good air quality, using things like a HEPA air filter in the rooms where you are spend most of your time, whether that's like in an office or in your bedroom where you sleep, just making sure that you have an additional uh, or you have air filtration in place to reduce the particulate that is in the room with you. Also, I will say one last thing. The CDC has some great resources. If you go to their website, uh, you can look up uh, wildfire um, support strategies, and they have a lot of information about uh, the planning and the scale that they've developed. And they, they recommend things. Uh, they do have some good tip, tips. They recommend wearing an N95 mask if it's really, uh, there's a lot of uh, particulate in the air and, you know, really minimizing your exposure as much as possible. And I think those are, those are good ideas, but, um, you know, as with anything and with, with any of these um, suggestions and ideas that I'm talking about here, make sure that you check with your doctor to make sure that it's appropriate before you do anything that I'm talking about. This is just informational in nature, and it may or may not apply to your particular situation. But so the, the next thing that we need to really talk about is, um, well, so we know that if you get exposed to this particulate, there are some negative things that happen. It typically triggers an inflammatory response. There is increased mucus production, and this creates all these problems for our breathing and our lung health and actually can um, really trigger and exacerbate uh, immune issues. And it can lead to other problems. So one of the first things that you want to do and consider doing here is thinning the mucus, doing things to help thin the mucus. And I would say one of the most powerful things is staying very well hydrated. You don't get dehydrated or you're going to have problems with thickening mucus. So stay hydrated, number one. Uh, number two, you can use a supplement called N-acetylcysteine. Now, N-acetylcysteine has a tremendous number of health benefits. Um, I take about one gram every single day uh, along with some glycine. And those are uh, precursors. They help your body to produce glutathione, which is the master antioxidant. And it has, um, it has uh, some very uh, potent anti-inflammatory effects, and it helps with immune system regulatory function. So it helps to balance the immune response, which is really important because uh, the immune system can dysfunction several ways. It can be overly active, and you can have too much inflammation. It can be underactive and not produce enough inflammation when it needs to. And then there can be problems with, uh, you know, the um, initiation and the resolution of the inflammatory response. And that's really the regulatory function of the immune system. So all these things, you know, have to be considered. But in acetylcysteine or NAC has been shown to be mucolytic. So it helps to thin the mucus and can be really, really helpful at um, helping you to breathe better and um, just you know, have uh, a much better quality of life when you're getting uh, exposed to, to these different types of chemicals and, and particulate that's in the wildfires. And I'll also say this, because NAC contributes to the production of glutathione, it can help with the detoxification of uh, a lot of these chemicals that you get exposed to in the, uh, the wildfire smoke as well. So step one, uh, reduce your exposure, uh, drink plenty of water, and then consider something like NAC to thin the mucus. Uh, the next thing is, once you have the mucus thinned, or you ha if you have this extra mucus, you want to be able to get it up and out. And your, your lungs, the cells that line your lungs are pretty amazing. They have these finger-like projections that point inward, and they're called cilia. And these are very similar to what you find in the digestive tract and in uh, other... Um, mucous membranes. And and remember this is the lung the lung wall or the cells that line the lungs. They are the interface between the outside world and the inside world of your bloodstream. And they are your your lung lining is a barrier system. It is a selectively permeable barrier system that is there and designed to let things in uh, that should go into the bloodstream and 
and and then keep things out that should not, right? So in a very simple terms, it is a barrier that lets things pass through uh, and keeps things out that shouldn't be there. And this is something that can break down. This can dysfunction and then you can get things that are in the air and uh, that, sh- that you inhale that will pass through into the bloodstream that shouldn't be there. And this can create all kinds of different problems. This can create immune problems. And this is very similar. This is, um, you know, there's a concept in functional medicine called intestinal permeability or hyperpermeability when the GI tract lining becomes porous or, uh, you know, the lay term for it is leaky and it lets things from the GI tract into the bloodstream that shouldn't be there. And it's well known to cause, um, uh, inflammation and can drive, uh, immune issues and it, and it can be a gateway to autoimmunity. And the lung barrier is very, very similar. And uh, a lot of the same consequences can occur there. Uh, too. So, you know, you, we're really talking about uh, that you can develop leaky lung or this permeable uh, lung lining as well. And so none of that is good for lung health or the immune system. So those are things that we want to stop. So one of the things um, that you also want to consider is the mucus. Once you're thinning it, how do we, how do you get it up and out? And there, there is a supplement that you can take. Uh, there, um, there's something called horny goat weed and horny goat weed has this uh, this compound in it called epimedium and it it what it does is it helps to stimulate the cilia the little finger like projections on the cells that line the lungs to move the mucus up and out of the lungs so that can be something that can help you to clear the mucus and it can be a you know another helpful tool so you can thin the mucus with the NAC and then you can help to get it up and out with uh, something like horny goat weed, and a lot of times that is uh, that is consumed either in a, as a supplement or uh, as a tea. Now, the next thing that you need to think about is the lung lining itself. Remember, we talked about this analogy of the walls and how the walls uh, of your room are covered in in, in a cell layer. Uh, one cell thick wall and this would be like analogous to the inside of the lung and the the cells that line the lung can become damaged and they can be um, damaged due to the particulate and the chemicals that are coming in the uh, immune response like everyone's going to have a different response to these chemicals in the particulate the people don't have the exact same responses that's why some people that inhale the wildfire smoke will be perfectly fine and not really have any issues and someone else could have very significant uh, respiratory symptoms and uh, problems develop and that is just our bio individuality you know those are um, different immune systems i mean there's it's very complicated uh, how we get to that point um, sure genetic factors as well so there are a lot of variables but one thing's for sure you want to support and have the healthiest lung lining that you possibly can so in order to support and help the lung lining to uh, repair and and heal, there are a few things that we might want to consider as far as supplementation goes. So there is a supplement called Bicalin, B-A-I-C-A-L-I-N, glutamine, and glutathione. So that's Bicalin, glutamine, and glutathione. And you can think of these as kind of like your repair crew. Uh, They will help to patch up and support the uh, barrier system, the lung barrier, and strengthen it uh, so that, you know, it's, it's more healthy and functions normally. Now, it's very interesting. These supplements, the bicalin, the glutamine, and the glutathione are also regularly used to help support a leaky gut or a leaky uh, intestinal barrier. Because remember, these are still epithelial linings and they function very similarly and similar things can support and help them. So those are great supplements to help support healing of the lung lining. Now, the next thing that you need to think about is when you're getting exposed to the smoke, you're also getting exposed to chemicals. It's not just the particulate, but the particulate is actually probably the worst thing uh, for you. But there are a lot of chemicals that are in the smoke as well. And so what you also need is you need to be able to support the detoxification and elimination of these chemicals. And your liver is going to be primarily responsible for that. The 
uh, the liver will break down and clear these things, and they go through different chemical processes called uh, detoxification pathways in the liver. And there are some um, compounds found uh, in foods, and you can also take these as supplements that may be very helpful. Now, the ones that I've already mentioned, NAC, uh, in it, which is N-acetylcysteine, uh, glutathione, these are, these are very helpful, very potent at supporting detoxification. So those in and of themselves will also be very helpful for, uh, for this, uh, this piece of the puzzle of supporting your lungs and trying to, to um, help minimize any damage. But you can also utilize sulforaphane. Now, sulforaphane, you've probably heard of it before. It's found in cruciferous vegetables, and it, it really stimulates and helps to increase these detoxification pathways. It's, it's really uh, helpful for that. And this is something that, you know, will help uh, stimulate these detoxification pathways and will work together with the NAC and the glutathione to uh, support detoxification of the chemicals that you're getting exposed to. So those can be a great combination. Now, the next thing is we've talked about the mucus that's produced, thinning it, trying to get it out of the lungs. We've talked about supporting the lining of the lungs and, and helping to nurture, uh, healing the, the walls uh, of the lungs. The next thing we need to talk about is the immune response that occurs. Because remember I said when the particulate and these chemicals get into the lungs, they can pass into the bloodstream. And that's when the immune system is going to, is going to see them. It's going to see that particulate. And some people will have really um, significant immune responses, and this can really create some some uh, you know emergencies for people, uh, and it can trigger and exacerbate asthma, and you know any lung condition just about can can be made worse because you're creating inflammation. So, the the immune system is something that you really want to focus on and support. Now, a lot of people when they think of the immune system they look for supplementation that supports the immune system. And most supplementation that, you know, quote unquote, supports the immune system is really just stimulating it. It's actually, you're taking herbs and things that will drive an immune response, like encourage it. And the immune system can dysfunction many different ways. And, uh, you know, so you don't always want to boost the immune system. And this is something that, um, that, that I really uh, like to caution people against, and that is you know, some of the, the, the sickest people that I've worked with, they're taking the most supplements and they're taking things that are stimulatory to the immune system. And one of the things that, uh, that I recommend is you don't want to stimulate the immune system. You just want the immune system to function normally. And the immune system should function normally by being in a in a low in, in state of inf state of low inflammation, there's, so there's not an ongoing inflammatory response where the immune cells are just surveying for potential foreign invaders, and but there's low inflammation because there's not an active immune response. Now, when you are exposed to something that drives an immune response, the immune system should mobilize. It should create inflammation that helps to destroy whatever you're exposed to that it's trying to eliminate. And then once the thing that your immune system is reacting against is gone, it should calm down and the inflammation should resolve. Now, this is a problem because a lot of people have dysfunctional immune systems where the immune system, the, the inflammation is very dramatic and prolonged and it doesn't resolve. And that's a problem because then you have chronic inflammation even after the trigger is, is gone. Uh, you can have issues where the immune system is the inflammatory response is not is not strong enough, uh, and um, and it's it, these are all things that are controlled by other immune cells called regulatory cells, and the regulatory cells kind of orchestrate and balance the ramping up or the production of inflammation and then the resolution. So you just want your immune system to function normally, and a lot of people don't have normal. They're, they're deficient in things like vitamin D, and that's really the next supplement that I want to talk about, vitamin D, because vitamin D can help with making sure that you, you have a normalized immune response. And really, you know, with, with any of these supplements, but specifically vitamin D, this one's pretty easy to check. It'd be great if you could get your vitamin D checked to kind of know where you stand. Uh, and then you can consider supplementation to get it to a reasonable level. 
and and you 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 recheck it the first you know the first um, few months that you start taking it so that you can make sure you're on the right dose that you're getting it high enough. I prefer a, either liposomal vitamin D or a sublingual that you can just hold under your tongue and not not capsules and tablets and gel caps. Just really liquid is uh, better in uh, absorbed form. So vitamin D is super helpful for supporting a normal immune response, supporting resolution of the immune response. And I will say this too, the, uh, the, the other thing that you would want to consider taking along with vitamin D to support a normal immune response and, and to support resolving uh, inflammation, which in a lot of these cases, you're going to have too much inflammation. It's going to be um, uh, exaggerated inflammatory response. So you want to have good levels of omega-3 fatty acids. In particular, you want to use something like, I like cod liver oil or fish oil. Those are fantastic. And, uh, you know, taking a significant enough amount that you get, um, uh, you, you produce, uh, the right, um, basically you're producing a eicosanoids, you're, you're producing, um, these, uh, these byproducts of uh, the breakdown of fatty acids that help with resolving inflammation. So essential fatty acids like fish oil can be really helpful at dampening inflammation, and that would be good to pair with vitamin D. And actually taking them together would be a great way to do it because vitamin D is fat soluble and absorbs with fat, so it needs fat to absorb. But those would be fantastic to support the inflammatory response. Now. When you have an immune response, when, when, you're, when you have this inflammatory response in your lungs, you produce these immune chemical messengers called cytokines. These, these act as kind of like these communications um, proteins, or, or you can think of them as like little, little soldiers that uh, can drive inflammation or resolve it, but they're primarily thought of as stimulating an inflammatory response. And you want to try and balance the production of those so that you don't have, you know, an overactive production of inflammation. And there are some uh, other supplements that can be very helpful for that. In, in particular, perilla is, uh, is something that can be helpful. Perilla extract, that's P-E-R-I-L-L-A extract. And then astragalus, A-S-T-R-A-G-A-L-U-S. They can be very helpful at balancing uh, this uh, this immune response and ensuring that you don't have an overactive uh, inflammatory response. So these are really good supplements to consider. There there might be a few others, but these are the ones that I would say are kind of like the top supplements that I would consider using to help support the lungs. So we'll go through those again: N-acetylcysteine, horny goat weed because of the epimedium. Also looking at bicalin, glutamine, and glutathione to support the, um, the lung lining and detoxification as well. Sulforaphane to support detoxification. Vitamin D and fish oil to support immune regulatory function. And then uh, possibly perilla extract and astragalus to support balancing uh, or uh, supporting cytokine production, which are proteins made by immune cells that can drive inflammation. They're chemical messengers that can drive inflammation. And this is a good, good place to uh, start or consider starting with supplementation. Now, as helpful as the supplements are, and I think that in this particular case, you really want to consider supplementation as a way to get a lot of these uh, these things into your these antioxidants these herbs and things into your body because you're not going to be able to get them uh, in significant amounts from food but I do want to talk about potential sources of these things from from foods so let's talk about NAC again in acetylcysteine and NAC is derived from the amino acid L-cysteine Food sources rich in L-cysteine are chicken, turkey, dairy products like yogurt and cheese, eggs, 
legumes like lentils and chickpeas and sunflower sunflower seeds. These are all significant sources of L-cysteine and that can help with uh, NAC, NAC production and NAC levels. Now the epimedium, remember I said you want to use horny goat weed is primarily where, where you can get a, a good concentration of this. Uh, it is, you know, it's an herb and it's not typically found in everyday foods. So it's usually taking it as a, as a supplement. You might be able to find it as, um, as a tea, but it's usually taken as a supplement. Now by Callan is primarily found in the roots of Chinese skull, skull cap plant. And it's not commonly found in foods. It's usually just taken as a supplement, uh, a capsule form or, or as a tea. So by Callan, something that you could you could look for. These are just more convenient because typically this is not like an ongoing protocol that you would take forever. This is just like you know during a time when um, the wildfires are raging and you're trying to minimize um, exposure or irritation, or if you are symptomatic um, and the you, you know from the from the exposure, um, this is this would be something that you would take. But it's not necessarily something that you would need to take long term. Right now, if you have a compromised lung barrier or some other things, well, then you might need to take these things longer. They could be helpful in a, in a protocol for a longer period of time, um, more intense to uh, focus on trying to address some of the problems that you're currently dealing with. But again, that was something that you would want to talk to your doctor about because that's going to be unique to each person. And this is just general information here. It's not, you know, not medical advice. So uh, by Callan, we talked about that. Glutamine, now remember the glutamine is is uh, an amino acid and it can be very helpful at healing the intestinal barrier just and, and the lung barrier. Both of those barrier systems respond very well to this. You can find glutamine in beef, chicken, fish, eggs, uh, dairy products, cabbage is a good source. Uh, you may have heard of people doing like uh, cabbage juice and drinking cabbage juice. One of the things is cabbage juice is really high in glutamine so it can really help uh, the intestinal lining. Spinach is also uh, a source of glutamine and then tofu. So those are some potential sources there. Glutathione, which is the body's master antioxidant, in and of itself it's not found in many foods, but if you consume foods that have a lot of cysteine, glycine, and, uh, and glutamate, you're going to be able to manufacture and build glutathione because it requires those things. Glutathione requires cysteine, glycine, and glutamate so that uh, it can be uh, constructed and, and basically created. So if you're deficient in any of those, then you're going to have problems making glutathione, which is the master antioxidant, and can be really helpful um, for supporting the immune system too. Now, you can find glutathione in cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, uh, cauliflower, kale. You can find it in garlic, onions, avocados. Um, I believe it's pretty good source sources also in uh, asparagus because it is uh, cruciferous as well. Now, we also I also mentioned sulforaphane to help support detoxification. And this is found in cruciferous vegetables, primarily in uh, broccoli sprouts, but it's, it's in broccoli, it's in cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, and kale. Vitamin D, we talked about to support the immune response. You can find some vitamin D, um, you know, your body will make it if you're exposed to the sun, uh, and it doesn't take that long uh, to, to produce it, um, your skin to produce it. But you can get it from fatty fish, and I like cod liver oil with vitamin D, uh, but that's usually not quite enough, but you can get it from fatty fish. You can get it from fortified foods like milk and cereals, though I don't recommend uh, cereals. And a lot of people don't do well with milk, especially if you're talking about like thick mucus. Uh, there just seems to be a connection with um, consuming dairy and having thicker mucus. I think, you know, I, I could be completely wrong here, but if I'm not mistaken, there was a study done with, I believe it was collegiate athletes, and they found that the ones that uh, consumed dairy had higher levels or higher rates of exercise-induced asthma. I believe that was a study. I, would, I don't even, uh, I just, I believe I'm just trying to recall from memory, but there, there is 
does tend to be an association. And if you're autoimmune, a lot of people react to the proteins in dairy, to the casein. So um, that's, you know, it's a very, very common immune trigger. So I don't think that I would uh, really try to rely on milk or cereals or uh, cheese necessarily um, as a source, but there, it, it is it is put into those foods as well. And again, typically not in sufficient amounts. You can also get it from egg yolks and beef liver. Now the perilla extract that I mentioned is an herb and it's, it's, you know, in an extract form. So you're not going to find it in foods. It's usually just taken as a supplement and uses it as an herb, um, as needed. This is something that's been around for a long time and, uh, has been used in, uh, in Asia pretty extensively. Now astragalus, I also mentioned, remember the, uh, perilla extract and the astragalus were to support a more normal uh, cytokine level production, which those are those soldiers that can either drive inflammation or reduce it, but primarily uh, they'll drive it. And astragalus and perilla are um, there to support a, 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 a more optimal cytokine uh, production um, levels. So astragalus, like perilla, is an herb and it's not commonly found in foods. So you're typically going to take it as a supplement or as a tea. But if you, you know, if you utilize some of these supplements or these supplements, they typically can make a real significant difference in um, how you're feeling and how you're functioning. If you found this episode helpful, please share and leave a review. It really helps the podcast. And as always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. You can also follow us on YouTube and Facebook at the office of Dr. Brad Shook. You can join our Facebook group, the Greater Hickory Thyroid Support Group with over 11,000 members. And you can find me on Instagram at Dr. Brad Shook. And remember, together, we can make a difference. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you spending your time with me, and I hope this episode will help you improve your quality of life. Remember, your health is in your hands, and by staying informed and taking proactive steps, you can protect your lungs and optimize your health. I look forward to hanging out with you again on the next episode of the Hashimoto's Doctor podcast. Take care. Thanks so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed hanging out behind the scenes with Dr. Shook. You can also talk with and learn from Dr. Shook through Facebook Live on our Facebook page at the office of Dr. Brad Shook. Don't forget, you can also get access to our videos, guidebooks, and thyroid programs at www.drbradshook.com. Oh yeah, and don't forget one more thing. We can change the world one person, one family, and one community at a time. Until next time, remember, today is your day, and no one will tell you who you are and what you can be.